From Reminder Media, this is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Hosted by the VP of Marketing, Josh Steik, and Reminder Media's president, Luke Akery. So get ready to hear the golden nuggets that will allow you to live a life of freedom tomorrow, but only if you take action today. Welcome to another Silver Dollar episode of Stay Paid, the best sales and marketing tips of your week in 15 minutes or less. And today, our topic is, as Luke said before the uh, episode, it's really going to be a rant. But yeah. this, <laughs> this is, is a, a topic Luke and Josh rant. that we had, uh, we, you, meant, you actually mentioned doing this episode months ago. Yeah. And you're like, we should do an episode on uh, be the victor, not the victim. Yes. And then, I don't know, a week or two later, we saw, I saw Tom Ferry came out with one of his episodes uh, with the same title. Tom, are you like, tapping no, are my we, phone? If we put one out, it's going to look like we're copying from him, but... Yeah. So anyway, I figured enough time has passed now. We well, can do it. We wouldn't care anyways. But I think it really came out of, um, you know, we have a lot of people that we work with, a lot of clients and a lot of uh, partners. Yep. You know, we, you know, our employees are partners. And if there's one thing I can't stand <laughs> is I cannot stand people who use their situation to justify their productivity, mm. to justify their lack of activity, their lack of what they achieve. It is so frustrating Mm -hmm. because here's the reason why. And I love the stuff that you're going to get into and what you've written down. But the reason why I can't stand it when you think about being the victim, playing the victim card versus being the victor is, listen, there are people in this world and you might be one of them that were dealt a bad hand. Hmm. You were dealt a bad hand. Maybe your hand was harder than my hand. Maybe your hand, right, is something where it's like you're starting maybe a couple yards back. But it doesn't do you any good. (laughs) It doesn't do you any good to stay there. That's the the, the piece I cannot stand is going, yes, you're right. So what? What are you going to do now? Right. Like, okay, you were given a bad hand because guess what? The person who has to walk three miles to get a glass of water somewhere in the world right now, they were dealt a worse hand than you. And what are they going to do? Stand up and complain and go, because you were given a better hand than me. I'm not going to move. Yeah. This is life is unfair. It doesn't do you any good. And this is what I try to explain to people all the time. You might be right, but being right doesn't create <laughs> doesn't movement in anything. your life. It doesn't change anything in your life. And you might end up five years down the road. And even though you were right, even though people have sympathy for you, you're going to be in the same boat well, versus owning it. And going, yes, I was dealt a bad hand, but I'm going to play the hand that I was dealt. Yeah, let's talk about like victim mentality. So I pulled, I can't remember where I pulled this from, but the what it what it means, a victim mentality is an acquired personality trait. So this is not something you were born with. You're not born with a mm-hmm. victim mentality. This is something that you actually acquire, according to behavioral scientists, in which a person tends to recognize or consider themselves as a victim of the negative actions of others. So that's sort of the, the, the definition there as the negative action of others. At its core, victim mentality is a form of avoidance. It's a way of saying, I refuse to take any responsibility for myself or my life, which is kind of what you're saying there in terms of, yeah, okay, well, so what? What what are you going to do now? What is it, can you? Now, I love, now here's what I'm not saying. You can vent in your life. You can have a moment of frustration, despair, venting, all that stuff. The, The difference between the victim mentality and the victor mentality is victimhood, you live there. You make that the definition of who you are. There are people, literally, they get their meaning off of being the victim. Yeah. And it's such a travesty. And it's so it makes me so sad when I meet them because I go, man, you've defined your meaning out of being the person who is down and out. It's like, man, change your mindset. Now, I love Jocko, who is the extreme ownership guy who spoke to us. He talked about, I think it's the Navy SEALs. I, I can't remember if he called it the one minute rule, two minute rule, whatever it was. Give yourself... Two minutes to vent. Give yourself two minutes to be frustrated and then get back on the horse and never think about it again. Right. Right. That's the difference maker that I would try to give to people. And the reason why it's just like I'm so passionate about it is because the number one thing I see in coaching agents and other businesses and and my own people here at Reiner Media is is a lack of extreme ownership and a wanting to blame others. Because when you look and you point to external things, it gives you an excuse and a justification who you are. And at the end of the day, it's tough to look in the mirror and go, this is my fault. Mm -hmm. It's tough to look in the mirror and go, yes, I was dealt a bad hand, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to still have a positive attitude and move forward. That is a very tough thing to do. And here's the real, real kicker, right? Because there's someone really close. I'm not going to mention their names for, for privacy standpoint, but there's someone real close in my life 
that is, you know, I'll say is related to me, but it's real close to my life that's related to me that has never moved forward on their ideas. Mm. And every time there's a reason why, whether it's an ailment, whether it's a, an excuse, whatever, right? There's a reason why. And what it truly is, and I know it because I can see it over the years, what it truly is, is it's the fear of failing and, and actually owning the failure. It's the fear of going, if I actually executed on what I said I was going to do and it doesn't work, then all my world collapse. At least if I make an excuse, I can blame the excuse of why I've never accomplished my dreams. More people like to dream of winning something than actually trying to win something. Yeah. It's why people play the lottery. Like they're more excited, like of just thinking about the opportunity than actually executing on it. And it's such a shame because this person's life, you can tell it's just a cloud of depression yeah. and doom and gloom that follows them. Because well, they're scared of the failure. That's really the, so the, we've talked a lot about the victim mentality and what that means, but also the victor mentality is that idea of when seeing those challenges, when seeing what life has dealt you or seeing what others have done, like you, the victors see that as an opportunity and are actually motivated by using that as a way to accomplish what they want to accomplish. So I thought it'd be helpful because you might be listening to this saying, well, how do I even know if I have a victim mentality? Here's, um, I pulled this from a site. I think it's called Addicted to Success. And they had 12 ways, but I pulled eight out of here that I think are worth going over of ways to recognize when you are in that victim mentality state. So the first one, some of these we've touched on, but when you're self, uh, self, self loathing, <laughs> thinking only bad things happen to you, this is really uh, needing to change your mindset. And instead of thinking that only bad things happen to you, think about what you could do to actually turn things around in your life. So it's refocusing your energy on what you have control over versus what is yeah, external and happening point. to you. Uh, second one, when you start looking back at the past with the regrets, mm. so this is a tough one. You know, if you have some regrets in your life, do you have regrets? I have, I have a, I have a, a few handful regrets of too. regrets. Yeah. yeah. The idea here is to, instead of looking back with regret, learn from them and move on, commit to not making that same mistake again. So if it's yeah. something that you're truly regretful of and you think, okay, this, this I did wrong or this was wrong that happened to me, Commit to not making that mistake again. Yeah, it doesn't define changes you. your mindset entirely. Third one, comparing yourself or comparing your achievements to others. Ooh, this is a big one. This can be a tough one. Yeah, this one, this one's huge. Yeah, if you start looking at, well, what are others doing compared to me? Instead, work to become the best version of you without yeah. comparison to others. So use yourself as the benchmark for your own success. It's the 1% rule. Get 1% better every day. Absolutely. Number four, you start withdrawing. So this is the idea of you may stop putting, if you're someone that likes to be around people or you start finding yourself isolating or withdrawing, that's a sign that you might be in that victim mentality because uh, the opposite of that is putting yourself around others that are motivational or are inspirational. And if you find yourself avoiding that because you don't want to go to that place, that could be a sign of victim uh, Michael Burt, go listen to that episode because he talks about activating your prey drive. And when I find myself withdrawing, like uh, it's what he teaches has really spoken to me about, man, I got to find that thing that activates my prey drive to get me out of my bed, to get me out of this, you know, where I want to kind of just hide and go into that shell because life is hard. It's hard for everybody. Find the thing that activates your prey drive. Number five, you start placing blame. So you mentioned this, obviously, this is probably one of the biggest ones that is easy to recognize. Um, this article said, I love this quote, it's no one else's job to give you the life you want. So if you're placing blame on uh, others for your situation, it's not their job yep. <laughs> to make anything to, to give you the life that you want. Steve Maraboli, I pulled this quote, he's an author and behavioral scientist. He says, the victim mentality will have you dancing with the devil, then complaining that you're in hell. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. That's you're great. in control. Number six, you're not able to forgive. This is a big one. You're only hurting yourself when you harbor resentment. Give yourself permission to forgive and be free. You know, you well, I think it's proven. Like if you don't forgive, it festers into bitterness. Yeah. And, oh man, bitterness is something that really can crush. Not only the soul, it can crush your whole attitude. Yep. And you won't be able to grow from there. Number seven, you start taking rejections hard. So this is one, like if you get rejected or you get criticized, keep in mind that the mindset shift here is if you tend to take rejections hard or you tend to take criticism hard, people critique you based on their perception of themselves, mm. right? So the thing they hate in you is the thing they hate in themselves. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So you've got to get to, and this, I mean, to say, hey, you've got to just learn to take rejection. That's, that's, you can, it's easier to say than it is to do, but Training yourself and building that uh, that armor or that toolbox of of things that you need in order to overcome that rejection is keeping something like that in mind that, hey, when someone's critiquing you, they're critiquing you 
based on how they perceive it. A lot has to do with where you get your self-worth from. But I also would tell people that it's it's okay. Like, let's take the phones, for example, not wanting to to make phone calls because you're scared of that rejection. No one wants to make phone calls. I don't either. Like people might listen to this podcast out of the years I've done this podcast and the years I've done phone calls like and go, wow, Luke's never scared of making a phone call. He's never nervous. He never you know, minds the rejection. That's not true. I do. The difference maker is I don't let the fear of rejection stop me from doing it. Mm. That's the real key. It's like you're going to be scared. You're going to feel these certain ways. That's an emotion. You can choose to do things outside of emotions. That's the key point I would drive home for people. And then the last one that I pulled here is uh, number eight, you are no longer taking risks. So if you find yourself no longer taking risks, uh, that might be an indicator that you're in the victim mentality mindset. This comes really from fear-based, this self-defeatist mentality. So without risk, you'll never receive those rewards. So if you, and you mentioned this earlier as well in terms of you know, your personal story, but the fear of failing mm-hmm. is hold, holds so many people back from trying anything. I've, yeah. I fall into this because I am, if you guys are familiar with the Enneagram, I'm a type one. So I am a perfectionist, which kind of means if I can't get it perfect, I have fear of even pushing it forward, knowing that it can't be. So really have had to work hard to push yeah. beyond that, understand that, hey, perfect is the enemy of done and good enough is good enough. Right. And so eliminating that fear and just pushing forward and it takes time. You know, you got to yeah. do it a few times. You got to feel the success or feel the reward from taking those risks. And then that will become a habit that you can build in your life to get out of that victim mentality. It's really um, something that's super hard for people who are trying to do marketing well, whether you're trying to do video, you're trying to speak in public, like you want to do it well and you want to hear the praise of the people. But you got to realize that, look, you know, in order to actually be great at something, you got to be frequent and you can't do it for just them. You're doing it for you. That's why everybody says you got to come back to your why. What's your why? Where you get your self-worth from? What's driving that? And you need to dig hard into that. Yep. So there you go. Victor or victim. Any final words? Um, Stop being the victim. It doesn't do you any good. That's it. It doesn't do you any good. You're going to be in the same place five years from now. You might be right, but you're still going to have a crappy bed you're laying in. I have a quick question for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. So let's say someone's listening to this podcast and they go, after you just listed all those eight things like crap, I am more of a victim than I am a victor. What would your advice be to get them out of that mindset that they can do daily, like a daily tactic? Mm, that's a putting fantastic. you on the spot. Yeah, no, that's a fantastic question. Um, so I'll give you kind of what I would encourage you to do. One is I would look at your intake, right? So much of what defines you is the intake that you have. So you got to look at your intake, what you're reading, what you're watching, what you're listening to, right? Who you're spending your time with and, and ask yourself, are those things building me up? Are those things empowering me, making me uh, realize what my self-worth is, all these good things, or are they bringing me down? Are they not adding anything to my life? So that's the first thing I would look at is your intake. The second thing I would look at is your accountability. So, you know, we're relational beings, I believe, and you need other people. And so, you know, it takes a tribe to raise a village. The idea of finding someone that can help challenge you to where you want to go is so key. You need to find that person in your life, whether it's a coach, a, a parent, a, a brother or sister, something like that. Those are the two things I would do. Yeah. I mean, I uh, love that. I also, from the mind, I am such a believer in mindset that you have the ability to control your mindset. So whatever you need to do to create those reminders, to change your mindset from the standpoint of it's not what others are doing to you. It's what can I do to change this situation? Put sticky notes around your office, put mm-hmm. sticky notes put in something your car, on your mirror. just so that when you start having those thoughts, you're immediately reminded it's your responsibility to change your mindset and the way that you think about that. Love that intentionality. All right. Thank you so much for listening. You can head on over to statepaidpodcast.com for the show notes and the video of this episode. Um, I really want to give a shout out to Gabrielle who writes all of our show notes. Like they are, she takes what we do on this podcast and then really expands upon it, includes some of the links and the resources that we talk about. And it's just a great read. It's another yeah. great reminder to have uh, if you're sitting here listening and thinking, am I in the victim mentality mindset and how do I get out of that? You don't have to listen to the full episode again. You can go back to the show notes and check out some of those tips. To support the show, we'd love it if you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star review along with a rating to let us know how we're doing or a comment to let us know how we're doing. The best way to help out the show is to tell a friend and share this episode on your social media. So speaking of the whole like victim mentality thing, this idea like, you know, injustice in the world. So I looked up this trivia fact. Justice is a dish uh, served or best served cold. Let me do this again. Yeah, okay. <laughs>
Justice is a dish best served cold. If it were served warm, it would be just water. I'm going to give Ariel a sec. I'm going to give both of you a second to see if you got it. Justice is a dish best served cold. If it was served warm, it would be just water. Because if you sell, if you spell justice, it's just ice, right? (laughs) Yeah. Just ice. (laughs) These are by far my favorite types of jokes in the world. Awesome. (laughs) Yeah, because it makes you feel like an idiot at the same time. No, it's, it's, funny. it's not even that. It's just I think even once you get it, it's not even that funny. Well, it makes <laughs> me feel that. better that it's not just me. Like I, I, I gl- I'm glad that Luke and I were both like, okay. Say I that basically again. love jokes that aren't funny. Yeah. If you want to get hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at reminder me.com or find us on Instagram. We are at Stay Paid Podcast for this episode of Stay Paid. I'm Joshua Stike, guys. And I'm Luke Acre, and your action item is don't be the victim. Right? Don't play the victim in anything you do, whether it's your marketing and your cold calling that you're trying to accomplish, your business, your family life, your relationships. Only you can change you. You can't change other people. Stop trying. You can only change yourself. Don't be the victim. Be the victor and go accomplish what you're meant to accomplish. Remember the difference between top producers and mediocre producers. His top producers take action. Take action on that today. 